in my last video, I actually showed you how I kind of took you on the adventure of getting this shot. I showed you how I captured it, where I was. And in this one, I'm going to actually show you how to process this image. And here's the original straight out of the camera. I'm going to show you how to process and get it to like this. And this is more actually what it looked like when I was there. Um, and it's important to understand what camera settings I was using. I was using, of course, my Nikon D850, an excellent camera. And I was using a Nikon 20 millimeter f1.8 lens, another great lens, really wide. I was shooting at ISO 64. That allowed me to capture a wide dynamic range that you see in this image and it allows me to bring it back in post. I shot it at f14. That helped me get this starburst here, but it was also probably a little too much and I might have lost some detail here in the rocks due to diffraction. But I'm overall, I'm really happy with the image, so I'm not going to complain with that. And I chose a shutter speed of one quarter of a second. At this point, the shutter speed was the only thing that I was doing to actually control the overall light or exposure of this image. So let's actually revert it to the original and get started on actually processing this image. And here's that one moment. Oh, all of those things are gone. Right, the first thing I like to do is come over here to this optics section and tick off both of these uh, boxes here. I'm going to remove chromatic aberrations and I'm going to enable lens corrections. And what this does, this really just fixes any imperfections that you might have with your current lens or camera setup. Um, this one was a little warped and that lens tends to vignette on the outside a little bit. So enabling these fixes that. All right, let's see if we can bring back that beautiful sky to what it looked like when I was there. When I was shooting this shot, I really wanted to capture as much detail in the foreground as possible. And as a result, I overexposed the sky and lost some detail up there. But past experience has taught me that I can bring it back when I shoot at ISO 64. In order to do that, I'm going to use this linear gradient tool over here. And this acts just like a graduated neutral density filter that you might use in the field, but I don't own one of those. So I'm just going to apply this one in post. And the trickiest part is really deciding where you want to start. But I know I want to just correct the sky here. So I'm going to start right about here and I'm going to drag down. Um, that looks pretty good for now. And from here up, the effect is going to be the strongest. And from here down, it's going to just gradually fade. But once you've placed this uh, filter, you can always make adjustments to it at any time. That's one of the cool things about Lightroom. Um, you can always come back and make uh, adjustments and changes as you see fit. So if you wanted, you could stretch this up here. You could actually grab this blue dot and move the entire filter all around. So I'm going to put it down maybe right about here so I can get the entire sky. Yeah, that looks to be pretty good. And I'm going to go over and make some changes to the exposure because that's where we really had the biggest problem. So I'm going to drag it all the way down, which is way too much. I'm going to drag it back up. There we go. That looks better. That's what it looked like when I was there. You can still see that sun. Um, let's add a little bit of warmth to it because it's missing a little bit. So just a tad. There we go. Got a little bit of that warmth color from the sun back in the sky. Uh, and then let's see the highlights. If you drag them all the way down, that's a little too dark. So I'm going to bring it back up. Um, somewhere right around there. It's not updating. There it is. Okay. That looks really, really good. And uh, anything else? Yeah, we need to add some uh, clarity and some dehaze. Dehaze will remove the haze in the sky, but when you crank it like that, oh, it just ruins the image. So you got to bring it back to the way it was. That's not too bad. And same with clarity. Let's drag it all the way to the side. Man, look, at it really clears up the sky, but that's not what it looked like. I really want a little bit softer because it was soft when I was there. There we go. That looks better. It's still, the sky is still missing... I don't know, a little bit of the color that was there. So let's go with the saturation. And if you drag it all the way to the right, you can see it's going to be way too much. So then I'm going to drag it back down just to get a little bit more color in that sky. There, that looks more like the sunset that I remember. Now we're getting somewhere. Looks pretty good. This sky is looking pretty good, but I don't really like the placement of this filter. It's darkening the edge of this ridge over here, and I don't really want that. So I'm going to make a few adjustments to it and see if I can get that ridge line to lighten back up to the way it was. That's looking a little bit better. It's not so dark on the side there. Um, I'm going to bring it up just a hair over this way. Yeah, that looks much better. Yep, I think that's pretty good. Now that we've got the sky looking really good, let's move out of this section and go into here. And I'm going to go right into the detail tab 
and I'm going to add just a little bit of sharpening to this image, maybe around 64 or 65 should be good. And I don't want to sharpen everything, especially the sky. I still want some portions of the sky to be soft, so I'm going to mask it out. And to do that, I'm going to hold the Alt key, and I'm going to drag this masking slider to the right, and you get this really cool effect. Everything that's black receives no sharpening. Everything that's white does. So this way I can get some sharpening around all the edges just where I want it. There you go. That looks really good. And I'm not going to apply any noise reduction just yet, although I probably will by the time I'm done with the entire image. All right, let's move to the next section. I'm going to go ahead and close this detail tab and go ahead and open the effects tab. I'm going to apply a little bit of dehaze and a little bit of clarity to the overall image. And I'm going to just drag this all the way to the right. And yeah, that's pretty hideous. So I'm going to drag it back down. It's way too much. Uh, somewhere right around there. I actually cleared up the foreground quite a bit. It looks like it actually brightened it just a little bit too, which is what I want. Now let's see uh, what we can do with that dehaze. I'm going to do the same thing, and it's just going to wreck this picture. Oh, yeah, that's just that's hideous. So I'm going to bring it back. I don't really want a lot of dehaze here because there was actually a lot of haze in the canyon, and I want to preserve some of that stuff in this image. There we go. That looks really good. All right, let's play with some of the color here in this shot. So, it, you know, it's not showing all the color that I remember, um, especially on these rocks. So I'm going to just crank this vibrance all the way up. Yep, that's way too much. And then I'm going to bring it back down there. That looks a little bit better. And then I'm going to adjust a couple of colors, just individual colors, um, like orange. Let's, let's see where the orange, you know, that was on all of these rocks here. Let's see where the orange lives in this picture. So I'm just going to crank the orange all the way up to get a good idea of where all that orange is. Yeah, it's all over, and it's way too much. So I'm just going to bring it back down. That just let me see where it all exists in this picture, or it lives. You know, as Bob Ross always said, where does this color live? So let's look at the yellow. Where does yellow live? Oh, yellow lives up in the sky in this one, and it's way too much. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit because I don't want the sky to be oversaturated like that. And I'm just going to mess a little bit with the blue that's up in the sky. Um, if you drag it all the way to the right, you can see where all the blue lives in this shot. And that's way too much. So I'm going to drag it back down. I don't really want to increase the saturation, if any, on this blue in this shot. And then the luminance is interesting because it affects the brightness of the blue. So you drag it all the way down. It's really dark. You drag it all the way to the right. It's really bright. I'm going to just barely add maybe just a little bit of luminance to this. Just, just a little bit. Maybe right about there. Yeah, that looks really good. All right, we're in the home stretch now. So let's move into the actual light or exposure section of this. I'm not going to do all that much to this now that I look at it. It could use a little bit, maybe a little bit more contrast. But yeah, definitely not that much. Bring it back down. I just want to have a little bit of dark spots in those walls there where those caves are on the right. And the highlights, let's see what happens if I drag it all the way down. And... Nope. Yeah, this is way too dark, so I'm going to bring it back a little bit and then move right on down to the shadows. The shadows are always interesting. I mean, if you crank it all the way to the right, you'll be able to recover all of these shadows here, but it's going to be hideous. And yes, that's awful, so I'm going to drag it back down a little bit. Just just want a little bit more light on this foreground. That, there, that looks much better. I'm really liking this now, uh, but it's still it's missing something. Like in the foreground on all these rocks, it's missing a little bit of, a little bit of color. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another linear gradient that'll take up just this foreground here, and maybe get some more color back onto this, just a little teeny bit. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe right here in the middle, I'm going to click and drag up because I want this to affect the foreground, and this <laughs> this gradient filter is still using the exposure settings from the sky, which is no problem. You can always change it right back. So I'm just going to place it where I want it, maybe condense it a little bit so I can get most of the foreground. Remember, it's strongest from that, that bottom line all the way down. And I'm going to clear out all of these settings just by double-clicking each one. And it should, yeah, it sets them right back to zero. I know there's probably a way you can just click and erase all of them, but that's fine. And then I'm going to come in, and because it's missing just a little bit of orange, I'm just going to warm it up a little bit with the uh, temperature. I'm going to drag it all the way to the right, and it's going to be probably awful let's see oh, come on there oh yeah that's that's yeah that can't work so i'm gonna drag it back down just to bring a little bit of that orange light from the sun that was there back into the face of these rocks let's see how this looks boy it's slow all right there it goes oh yeah that looks much better all right we're gonna do one more thing and that's just 
add a tiny, teeny bit of noise reduction to this image. Um, not really much at all, because I know a lot of the settings like cranking up the shadows or too much clarity, too much dehaze, sometimes either adds or exposes some of the noise that would have been in this picture. So just a little teeny bit to maybe tame some of that. And there you go. It's that simple. Thanks so much for watching and sticking around until the end. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Check out my workshops that I offer and the books I offer on my website. And of course, there's always more videos right around the corner. 